around the moon as scientists around the world are piecing together the causes of this unprecedented lunar phenomenon. We're here on the campus of Plymouth Institute of Technology to speak with staff astrophysicist Dr. Lana Gale. Doctor, what can you tell us? Well, basically, we've been blindsided. The orbit of an undetected asteroid has intersected with the moon's orbit, and the two have collided. While we would like to think that we would always see something like this coming, the sky is a vast place, and unfortunately, we don't have all the resources that we need to fully cover it. And what can you tell us of what we're seeing up there? What we're seeing is an impact cloud of debris and regolith that will eventually subside. Regolith? The powdery rock covering the lunar surface. So I guess a more urgent question would be, is there any cause for alarm? Well, these things are always more alarming when they happen so close to home, but I think the best approach is to wait and see what happens, react to what develops. As my father used to say, Dr. Lawrence Gale, the universe is a case of unfinished business. Thank you very much for your time, Dr. Gale. My pleasure. How was it, Tony? You were awesome! <laughs> You, you, like, exuded confidence and, and clarity and strength and knowledge and expertise and... But, um, regolith? That's what it's called. I know that. But the average viewer isn't that knowledgeable. Lana, did you eat anything? Because I kind of skipped dinner. Oh, I'm sorry, Tony. No, um, please go home. I'll see you in the morning. No, I'll pick us up something. We'll eat it here. We'll celebrate. My treat. Tuna salad, no mayo, heavy Dijon. Thank you. For obvious reasons, it's premature to launch into any kind of conjecture at this time. What I can say is that we at ASI are assuming the leadership role in interpreting the incoming data gathered by the international scientific community. ASI is the definitive space agency in the world today, and we have our absolute best people analyzing this phenomenon. Very shortly, we'll, uh, we'll be presenting our analysis to the White House, where a press conference will follow. Dr. Pender, one more question. What would happen if a similar asteroid were to hit the Earth? Depending on speed and trajectory, there would be great repercussions. Garth, Dr. Lana Gale is online too for you. Yeah, I got it. Thanks. Lana, thanks for calling. Have you seen the latest? I'm probably not as up to date as you are. Garth, what's going on? Our information on the halo is uh, a concern kind of a concern. Preliminary data shows some of the asteroid fragments on a course that will bring them into Earth's orbit. Hey, Don. You went on the moon last night, were you? Hey, Don. All that dust and debris floating around, it kind of looks like your handiwork. If I was up on the moon last night doing my work, it wouldn't be there anymore. <laughs> Copy that. Checklist. Good to go? Yep. All right. Let's blow up a building. All right, Ollie. How we looking? Locked and stocked, buddy. Check it out. Good. Right on schedule. Looks like you're gonna owe me 20 bucks, homie. I shake on that? Oh, yeah. Well, the building ain't down yet. Board. Right now, let's go. We gotta stop the sequence. We're gonna shut it down now. No, systems 
aren't responding. There's something wrong. Ollie? I'm just trying to override it, John. Give me a few seconds. Okay, let's have some fun. What the hell are you doing? Brina, continue to rebalance the sequence. I'm gonna go up there and find that misfire you talked to me on the radio. John, the charges are hot. You can't go up there. Listen to me. We don't know how that building's gonna come down unless we rebalance the system. Ollie, figure out why that clock is still ticking and shut it down. I'm on it. I'll be back. Okay, now, Brina, give me the location of that misfire. Ninth floor, 8A. Okay, copy that. Ollie, have you stopped the countdown? John, the, the explosion messed up the whole system. It's lit up like the biggest strip. Now, I'm trying to stop the detonator, but it ain't happening. I know you got my back, Ollie. So make it happen. All right, John, listen. Everything I'm seeing here says that the charges did not go off on their own. I think someone's in there. Great, that's all we need. Let's get the cops on the radio, tell them what we got, all right? All right, I'll tell them. But look, if someone's still in there, he might keep setting things off. You won't have enough time to fix it all. No, 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 no. I'm gonna have plenty of time, Molly, because you're gonna fix that damn clock. Hey, look at that, it stopped. <sighs> How we doing for time? There's no rush anymore. The countdown stopped. No, 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 no. That was the five minute warning, guys. That means that clock is not off. Okay, we're gonna have to reboot the whole system. John, where are you? I'm on the ninth floor now. Do I go left or right? Left, no, right. My, my left, your right. Come on, Brina, focus, okay? Now I'm coming up on a large central room. In the middle of that room, you'll find column 8A. Okay, okay, hold on, I think I got it. That's the one that's missing its charge. Lines 21A through F. Okay. Are they still hot? Yep, they're hot. Damn it. Help! Help me! Help! I'm coming! Okay, looks good. You're online and set to go. Now get out of there. Help Hello? Me. Please, help me. We're gonna get you out of here, all right? Brina, I got a guy up here. He's pinned down by some debris. I got to get him out. On three, I'm going to lift this up. You pull your leg out. Ready? One, two, three. Get out of my house! Hold on a second. Stop! This is my house! I'm trying to help you, all right? Now listen to me. Your house is about to get blown to bits. Do you understand me? John, just get out of there, please. I'll be down in 90 seconds. Come on! Less than a minute left. Object the override NC system. See if you can get access. Watch out, watch out. Come on, Brian. You almost got it. Go, go, go. Come on! John, you gotta get out of there. Move it. John, move now. Go, 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 go! Oh, my God.
now have three reported strikes of asteroid debris, and they're not ordinary meteors, Lana. We're missing something. Why are so many of them surviving atmospheric entry? These objects aren't that big. They should be burning up. Then it's gotta be the density. The mass of the impactor asteroid must have been much bigger than we anticipated. But it makes sense. Because you were right about the ecliptic plane. The lunar orbits shifted? The numbers indicate a very gradual shift, and it could still self-correct, but there's already a rise in the sea levels, and the jet stream has taken a complete nosedive south. Which means a big weather change. Yeah, the kind that triggers an ice age. Okay, have we located the point of impact? No, nothing we can see. But we've got satellites in motion. I mean, we should get images soon. Hey, Will, Will, how long before we get a look? The probes are on their way. Garth, I'm in my office now. Did you copy Garth on you this? You should have it. You should have a uh, spectral image coming through. Yeah, yeah, I've got it. Hey, get your folks to work on that dark section. We just don't have the equipment here. We're having a hard time seeing through the halo. No problem. Hey, Will, take a look at this area right here, okay? Get on that. I really hope you're not sugarcoating this to the suits in DC, Garth. No, no, but which is why I'd like you here. They're gonna want solid answers. Which they'd rather hear from someone else. Nobody's gunning for you here, Lana. I was actually thinking more knives. Can we set aside the past? I need you. You'll run interference for me? All I can. Okay. I owe you one. I'll arrange a flight. See you soon, Lana. Remember when I said I'd never go back to ASI? Yeah. I lied. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, next time, you're bound to scare the crap out of us. That's all I'm saying. Copy that. So the deal with our homeless guy was this was his home and he was just trying to defend it. So I guess I can't blame him. You're lucky you got out of there, you know that? He almost died. Yeah, but I didn't. And the building came down perfectly. So on to the next. On to the next? John. You're not really gonna bust my chops right now, are you? Well, seeing as you almost got crushed, I think now's a perfect time. You can't let your work own your life. And yours does. Come on, take that vacation. We don't have anything coming up. Well, actually, we do have a demo possibly in Florida. Okay, that's it. I'm out of here. Where are you going? Come on, don't go. We're celebrating. Hey, I almost died today. It's not funny anymore, John. She died three years ago. You need to take some time off. Your wife's gone, John. She'd want you to have a life where things grow and thrive and not just crumble. Don't do that to yourself. Hey. hey. 20 bucks. Man, you gonna hold me to that? Oh, yeah. Cough it up. Let's go. All right, buddy, buddy, buddy. You give me any lip. You want my firstborn, too? Nope. That wasn't the bet. See you later. I'll see you later. Sat one is on course for the outer edge of the debris field. We've got some delicate maneuvering ahead. Telemetry, what's your status? Telemetry is go for live camera feed. Multiple objects on forward radar. Calculating flight path. Maneuvering thrusters engaged. Well, we've got too many targets on the flight path. Guidance. Abort this trajectory. Flight, we've got a proximity alert. There it goes. Flight, Lunarsat 1 has signal loss on all channels. Repeat, signal loss on all channels. Rerouting Lunarsat 2 for orbital insertion.
whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey. You taking this? Tony, I know it was radical at the time. But look what's going on. My father might have been onto something. Yeah. But what if all those people saying he was trying to preach the apocalypse decide to jump on you? One person led that charge. Victor Stevens. He had a lot of followers. Most of them still work at ASI. They're not going to be too pleased to see this manuscript. Well, I have to take that risk. If my father's work is relevant, I have to bring it to the table. Okay, Ollie, start setting up our site right away and get me all the structural data you can find. I'll call you from the plane. Thanks. Okay, before you say anything, I'm sorry. I'm late. I ran over as soon as I heard. With a stop for coffee. Yeah, and gas. Without either, I wouldn't have made it. Oh, but I did get us flights to Baltimore, and we landed in three hours. Seems to be lots of things dropping in on Baltimore lately. Yeah, well, they said on the radio that it was some sort of asteroid hitting the moon, that some pieces could be headed this way. Yeah. I heard that, too. Let's go. You know, as the reigning father figure in my life, I really need for you to tell me that everything's going to be okay. Everything is going to be okay. 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 Thank you. Lana, it's been a long time. It has. Thanks for getting here so quickly. Well, Baltimore may not be a unique event. I'm working on a theoretical model, but I'll need to get on your system and crunch the numbers for the latest data. Oh, my God. What is it? It's lost mass. What? It's lighter. According to these figures, it's lost 762 billion metric tons of mass. Which means the meteors aren't the asteroid debris. They're the moon. Took you long enough. Flight was delayed. This weather's not exactly predictable, you know. Well, it's not exactly easy for search and rescue either. Everyone accounted for? 50 dead. Almost 200 injured. That's what they're reporting so far. Uh, what are we looking at? Well, the buildings toppled inward onto each other, but enough of the bases stayed intact to hold them up for a while. OK. So we got an hourglass. Hourglass? Yeah, it's the most difficult to bring down, tricky to manipulate, but you just got to be precise, that's all. On top of which, the local hospital serving the wounded is right across the street. Well, this thing just keeps getting better and better. 
Okay, we got a bit of a challenge here. Let's put our heads together and see what we're up against. What's next, Garth? So listen, Lana, while the team is working over your findings, you can install yourself here in my office. Have you released a statement? We explained the Baltimore event was a meteor. We haven't let on about the possibility of more. And for the moment, our analysis of the Lunar Impact site is on its way to Washington. The next statement comes directly from the White House. What about weather changes? The tides are rising all over the world. Right now, incoming meteors are priority one. This is the new data on the crater coming in from Lunar Sat 2. We're gonna have a departmental meeting to discuss the situation. I'd like you to join us, give us your views. Well, I can tell you right now, we're gonna need outside specialists. What'd you have in mind? According to the city grid, looks like we've got an acceptable fallout zone to the northeast. We can tunnel under the foundations from the corner. Then we should be able to place charges to direct the hourglass collapse. Excuse me. John Redding? Yeah, that's me. The service I'm requested by the American Space Institute right away. The Space Institute? What do they want with me? I'm not at liberty to discuss details. Well, in all due respect, sir, take a look around. I'm kind of needed around here. Can't this wait? This order is authorized by the president, requesting the best in your field. That's you. Refusal is not an option. Oh. God bless America. Ollie, you're back in the saddle. Can you handle this? Yeah. Would you just get back quick? I will. John, listen. Now, hold on a second. You listen. Here's your shot to prove yourself. Now, first chance you get, you email me the structure can and all the blast points. You got it? Well, where are they taking you? Listen. You're my eyes and ears on this one, okay? Fine. Be careful. I'll be back. The data now coming in from Lunar Sat 2 has completely changed our understanding of the lunar impact. The meteorites were originally thought to be the remains of the asteroid that struck the moon. It has now been confirmed that they're actually massive pieces of the moon itself. Instead of leaving an impact crater, this asteroid has literally cracked the lunar surface open. The orbital shift it caused is gradual, however, it's already having an adverse effect on ocean levels and the jet stream. And this is just the beginning. The moon is now entirely unstable. This computer graphic shows the growth of the fissure, which we're calling the Rima Fault because of its location at the Rima Circalis. As gravitational forces continue to exert their pull on the fractured moon, the size of the Rima Fault will increase until it moves past the critical. If this happens, the result will be a civilization ending event. For the moment, there's little we can do about the deteriorating weather or incoming lunar debris, but we must stop the breakup of the moon. Our only chance is to find a way to stabilize the structure of the moon, specifically the Rima Fault. This is our clock, and it's unpredictable. So we need to find out how big the Rima Fault actually is, how fast it's growing, moving, shifting, down to the last millimeter. If everything comes together, we will have one shot, one window, to beat the deadline and save the moon. And we can't be wrong. We're depending on your calculations. Thank you, Lana. All right, everyone, you heard it. Let's get back to work. Well, apparently, forecasting the apocalypse runs in the family. Although your daddy never had such dazzling visual aids. Well, Victor, if you think things are exciting, stick around. They're about to get very interesting. No, I intend to stick around. See, my good friend, the president, he heard we had some trouble on the moon. He thought it might be a good idea for me to come down here and help fix it. You know, make sure we don't go off half-cocked, as they say. I think now would be a good time to run that interference, Garth. No, no, no. <laughs> Garth, don't bother. I, look, I don't want to get in anybody's way here. But like you said, we do only get the one shot. I just want to make sure it's right. Well, that makes two of us. I'll be with you shortly. OK.
Thanks for the heads up, Garth. Victor Stevens? He's here to help, Lana. Yeah, help himself. Mr. Redding, sorry for all the mystery. I'm Garth Pender. This is uh, Dr. Lana Gale. Thank you so much for coming. You guys didn't give me much choice. Yeah, we're sorry about that. We're experiencing a bit of a crisis. I noticed. I'm not sure you know what caused the mess you were cleaning up in Baltimore. Uh, meteorite. Right. The first of many. Our moon has suffered a great impact, and we believe the damage runs deep to the lunar core. Please, um, I'd like you to follow us. Mr. Redding, we've prepared a mock-up here as a visual aid. That's fine, thank you. Wow. That's some crack. Immense pressure continues to pull this section open wider. Eventually, this entire quarter will break away and find its way into Earth's gravitational pull. And then what? When that hits us, we go the way of the dinosaurs. You guys are serious. You should know what you're up against, Mr. Redding, if you're going to help us stop it. I'm just a demolitions expert on Earth. I, I don't know anything about the moon. Nobody knows more about how things collapse in on themselves than you. Now, we need your expertise to see if we can make the walls of the crevasse cave in. Just lock this entire section in place, stop the breakup. Wait a second. You guys want to put charges on the moon? Seriously, with all due respect, I really just think I'm way out of my league. Nothing like this has happened in the history of man. This is way out of everybody's league. We're not asking you to go to the moon, Mr. Redding. We're just asking you to be part of our team. At this point, the Atlantic is one huge staging area for a massive hurricane activity. In fact, there are several Category 5 storms in different places all at the same time. This is something that has never happened in all the time that man has kept track of weather. Call it an act of God, call it an eco-nightmare. One thing is for sure, this is a weather disaster the likes of which no one has seen in the modern era. Tell me what you got. Fresh intel from ASI on an incoming asteroid. Big? Latest estimate gives it an eight on the T-scale. We got birds in the air. It's only a 30-mile grid, 10 minutes of waiting orders. What kind of payload are we talking about? Sidewinder, sir. Well, let's get him climbing. Delta 1, Delta 2, scramble vector 6 at 2, 9, or 2. Trajectory uplink, N5. Roger, control. We're on our way. We're at 15,000 tracking inbound. We have initiated afterburner climb for intercept. All right, gentlemen, let's make this happen. Cloud covered, lost visual. I've got visual. Shot. Target is destroyed. You got it. That was too close. We got lucky. What else is on its way? We're tracking inbounds, but nothing rating on the T scale. Atmospheric burn ins. Keep on this, Lieutenant. I want jets in the air, and I want constant updates from ASI. The tricky part is to calculate what we call reaction mass. It's how we decide how big a blast is going to be and where we're going to place it. Can we determine that from this information? Well, I'm sure that we can ballpark it. But I can tell you right now, this blast is going to have to be massive, definitely nuclear. And the variables will keep changing with the fault growing all the time. Nuclear blast. 
Well, looks like I got here right on time. John Redding, this is Victor Stevens, chief advisor to the White House. Well, welcome aboard, Mr. Redding. Thank you. Pleasure to meet a man with such an illustrious family tradition of blowing things up. Oh, before you go putting the moon on your resume, I think you should both know that I have informed the president of what happened on Miranda. We don't know what happened on Miranda. That's sheer speculation. What's Miranda? Well, Miranda is one of Uranus's 15 moons. A research flyby in 86 revealed that uh, she'd been struck by a massive impact or cracked her surface wide open. But over time, see, she put herself back together. There's absolutely no conclusive evidence to support that. Besides, our moon has a solid iron core which was shattered just as my father predicted. Nothing will stabilize the moon unless we do that ourselves. The moon's structure is much less rigid. It's perfectly capable of displacing the energy from a massive impact. Until I see something that makes me feel otherwise, that is all we are going to do. There is a fracture running clear through the moon. And you just want to do nothing. We do nothing. The moon will do something miraculous. The moon doesn't have an iron core, Lonnie. Its gravity will stabilize it. Your father was wrong. Look, this isn't personal. We are going to rely on the prevailing wisdom, which is the best we've got. 500 years ago, prevailing wisdom said that the Earth was flat. Just because it's popular does not make it right. Ah. Look at that. President probably wants to hear how we're reappropriating his nuclear arsenal. I think I'll tell him we need three bombs. I mean, the Pinta and the, uh, well, that other one, whatever its name was. Santa Maria. Bingo! Is this a bad time? No, 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 it isn't. Guys, please, I'd like to introduce you to our mission crew for the shuttle Perseus, Major Rachel Fine, Captain Ben Halberstam. Pleasure. You're a demolition expert? That's me. Hi. Why don't we go down to the conference room and I can brief you? Okay, that's a good idea. Hey, guard. Your mission crew? What happened to leaving things alone? I mean, what if the moon could fix itself and Victor's right? Well, what if Lana is right and we're unprepared? Now, he may have the president's ear, but this is still my agency, and it is still within my authority to call for full contingency readiness. I am. Oh, good. Can't wait. They just shut down to 95. The equipment trucks are not getting here anytime soon. Well, how are we going to take this thing down without our pneumatic drills? I forget I said anything. Look, what do you want to do? You want to shut this down? No, no, no. We are not shutting down. We're just going to do exactly what John told us to do. You know what? I hope they had a good reason for pulling them out of here. What reason? What would ASI want with John, and why now? Radar has detected a cluster of meteors coming in. We should alert the Mexican government of possible strikes. Hope you don't mind. I was flipping through that book that you have on your desk. Your dad wrote that. Yes, and I don't mind. He would have wanted somebody to read it. <laughs> and he predicted all of this? Pretty much. Well, don't you think he should be here too, helping us? My dad passed away a few years ago. Before he died, he wrote a thesis based on lunar anomalies. Anomalies. You know, I don't think I got to that page. But he was right, right? In the scientific community, the debate between fact and truth can get brutal. Victor came out against my dad's theories. He managed to destroy his credibility. 
I just finished school at the time. I was trying to get my foot in the door at ASI. And I made the mistake of distancing myself from the controversy. I left my dad hanging so as to not tarnish my reputation. He passed away shortly after that. I'm sure he'd be quite proud of the work you're doing now. Listen, if there's anything I can do to help, please let me know. You could fly up to the Rima Fault and bring me back some mineral samples. That would help me out. Yeah, well, no problem. Lana, Victor's called an emergency meeting to discuss the Mexico impact. that struck the heart of Mexico City were massive in size, traveling hey. thousands of miles per hour and weighing hundreds of We're tracking of additional lunar debris. Miles. This Air probably won't be the last time we get hit. Blasts, ...leveling hundreds of blocks of the city. Mexico May I have everybody's attention, please? ...and is sending military troops to support the rescue efforts. Government Mexico City and the surrounding areas are gone. Repercussions from the latest impact have been felt all the way to Oklahoma. The moon's condition is getting progressively worse. Apparently, it is not fixing itself. So, the White House has given us a full go for a shuttle mission. Garth? With the uh, Rima Fault continuing to grow and the weather systems getting uh, progressively worse, we have to launch within 48 hours. So, let's talk specifics. John, how are we coming with those reaction points? Well, my initial calculations show we've got four potential blast points. The problem is, those keep changing all the time because the fault is growing. And I've got another question about our blast targets. What about them? I'm just trying to figure out exactly what kind of magnetic force are we dealing with when it comes to the moon? Minimal. The magnetic forces disappeared billions of years ago. Right. So what if we were able to bring it back? Instead of thinking about blasting, what if we looked at this as more of a welding job? <laughs> well, I hate to disappoint you, but the moon is not made of steel girders. Well, that still seems to be a point of contention around here, Vic. You say the moon doesn't have an iron core, but Lana thinks there's enough to give us some pull. I mean, we really just don't know exactly what the moon is made of. So what I'm wondering is, if we could create a magnetic charge and put it in the right spot to one side of the Rima Fault, well, then maybe we can get this thing to fall in on itself. Do you realize the conductor you'd need on that scale? It's impossible. A meg. Theoretically, it would have enough conduction. We have our solution. There's no evidence the moon has an iron core. We are not going back to the drawing boards. You need to pin down the coordinates for the nuclear blast points. What's a meg? Mass electromagnetic generator. It's a device that carries a very large electromagnetic pulse wave as part of the blast wave. Sounds like my kind of metal. What if we could get one big enough? How do we make this work? Who's your best engineer? A MIG charge? Are you on, are you on drugs? It, it can't be done. The materials there are way too fragile, way too unstable when combined, which makes them way, way too dangerous to be handled on Earth, let alone in space. Well, then I guess it's a good thing that the President's boy's not here. Albert, I can think of a million reasons why it won't work. I need your help with one that will. If I was to come up with a concept, the only way to keep this whole thing from detonating on launch is to keep the activators separate until you're in place. So it is possible. And did I mention that the two main ingredients in a MEG charge are liquid helium and uranium? Do you have any idea what happens when you mishandle those two guys? Albert, can it be done? Yeah, and another thing. You are not going to pass this off on some ASI pilot. This is heavy ordnance. You got to get this to someone who knows what they're doing. Huh? Who's that going to be? Is that you? Hmm? Because it ain't going to be me. Albert, we need a straight answer. Can it be done? I'll, I'll come up with something. But yeah, what I'm most concerned about is you launching my shuttle in this storm. 
She just wasn't made for that. It's me, you guys okay? John, can you hear me? Yes, what's your status? The status? Uh, well, we've elevated the winds to gale force. We can't get any of our gear in here. And besides that, these buildings are not looking too stable. Where the heck are you? Wishing I was still there with you guys, believe me. The weather service says this lightning's gonna get a lot worse. Rain on conditions are not gonna get any better for blasting. Should we shut it down? Yeah, I want you guys to get out of there. Evacuate everybody out of the area and shut it down. Brina, I need you to do one more thing before you go. What's that? I need you to find a piece of that meteor and bring it to ASI. OK. John, listen, uh, we have two of our best shuttle pilots, but on this one, we need a mission specialist. That specialist is you, John. You want me to go on the shuttle? I don't have any training to go to the moon, okay? We need you up there. We only get one chance. I understand that. We can't force you to go. You'll have first-hand visual. Quite frankly, we'd feel more comfortable if it was you up there pulling the trigger. All nuclear reactions have a magnetic charge. It's that entirely destructive element of the nuke that we're trying to avoid here. So, by using the electromagnetic pulse of the nukes to boost the magnetic charge of our mag, we can create a force powerful enough to recharge the magnetic field of the Rima fault. In theory. For how long? Long enough for the moon's own gravity to take over. I'm just giving it a jump start, in theory. I heard that you were going to uh, accompany the mag on board the shuttle. Well, with the situation being what it is, yeah, I'm in. Now listen, Albert. This meg charge, it's got to be... Meg what? What's going on here? We're just exploring options. Ah, exploring options. Well, we don't need any options. The nukes are on their way. And when they get here, I don't want so much as a spit polish to go on them without my authorization. Is that clear? Yes. Good. Big seismic numbers coming in. How big? That's a 40% jump from the last one. Will, what's our status? Launch site weather is getting much worse. Garth, this is insane. We can't go up in this storm. Nothing can go up in this storm. That's not an option, and you know it. You know, anyone you put up in that shuttle's on a one-way trip to oblivion. We're all facing oblivion. Get used to the idea. 
we lose power, they'll be flying blind. That's if we get off the pad. They will make it off the pad. There's no alternative. Now, the time for caution and second guesses, that's long gone. This mission is a go. Do you understand? Then push it up. Get them the hell out of here before it gets any worse. Victor, you can't still be convinced that the nuclear warheads are going to do the job. The moon is doing exactly what my father said it would, indicating he was right about the iron core. But you just go on like the facts don't exist. There are billions of lives at stake. We need to be rational. And we need to be right. We're pushing the launch up. Liftoff is five hours from now. The weather leaves us no choice. John, I need a moment. I, um, I just got some news from Baltimore. Those buildings have collapsed. What about my team and Brina? We don't know. I mean, we could try, but... John. Tell me we have a solid plan. Yes, we do. We go with the nukes. Mr. Stevens, we'll need your authorization, sir. No, come in. I heard about what happened. The buildings. I'm sorry. Garth has some folks trying to contact city officials to locate your colleagues. Is that her? No. That's my wife. She passed away three years ago. So when you said earlier that you lost somebody special, I understood what you were talking about. Just standing here wondering if she was still around, would I still want to do this? Would you? I think you would. The storm just hit tropical status. They're reporting gusts of up to 75 miles per hour. Gotta get you up in the air, John. Let's go. City 63 miles per hour from the southeast. Doppler is showing gusts to 71 miles per hour at 30,000 feet. Control, payload is secured. Okay, shuttle Perseus, we are at T minus three to launch. Hope everyone's comfortable. Comfortable? We're strapped onto the world's biggest vibrating whale, about to blast through a hurricane. This guy's talking comfortable. Sorry, John. Oh, you can hear me? Oh, yeah, we're all wired in. Visual, too. <sighs> OK, sorry. That's good to know. Control, we've got full green on O2 and H2. Tanks 1, 2, 3, and 4. Please confirm. Confirm, Captain. I'm handing over full system access to you now. Temperatures holding steady on nuclear pulse engines 1 and 2. Confirm. Roger, Perseus. Nuclear pulse engines 1 and 2 are solid. Nuclear pulse? I thought they were in the test phase. They are. You're joking, right? You know a faster way to get to the moon, Victor. I'm all ears. Yeah. OK, Perseus, looking for your readiness to proceed with launch. Over. 
Roger control, we are locked in. Temperatures a go, pressures a go. Roger that. T minus two minutes to launch. Well, we've got some flashing red up here standing by. Have a wind shear warning. Bypass it. Okay, flight directors, I want to go, no, go for launch. Capcom, Perseus. Go, launch, go for launch. Retro. Go, launch. Trajectory. No, go for flight. I've got a no, go signal for flight. Booster. 3%. No, go, flight director. Negative. I've got a no, go for launch. Oh, perfect. Four nuclear bombs, two nuclear pulse engines aboard a no, go flight. T minus one minute to launch. Navigation, give me your pre-flight status. Flight, navigation is no go for launch. Repeat, no go for launch. We have red lights across the board. We cannot launch this thing. We must abort now. T minus 30 seconds. Don't do it, Will. It's not gonna get any better out there. We're gonna be thrown around like deck chairs. I can't do this. Will, you listen to me. I'd like to give you 70 degrees in sunshine so you can launch properly. But I'm afraid that's not gonna happen. Now, don't you turn that key. T minus 20 seconds to launch. Three reds, Perseus. Roger, Control. We sustained a lightning strike. Control. We are losing trajectory. We're at secondary thrust 20%. Copy that. Standing by. Wind velocity has hit 87 miles per hour. Flight, they're being blown off course. Raise secondary thrust 30 percent. Come on, come on. Will, that's not doing it. Perseus, we're going to change course, heading to straighten you out. Adjust trajectory. 30 degrees northwest with the wind. Locking onto course. from storm-battered Houston, there is now hope that the ASI shuttle crew can avert the threat of disaster approaching our planet. 
Today, we are one planet without borders or differences, and every thought and prayer is with the crew of the shuttle Perseus as they set out to achieve what some say is impossible. Well, never thought I'd hear myself say it, but that was better than blowing up a building. Control, we are ready to leave orbit. Roger, Perseus. Receive a translunar injection on your mark. Nuclear pulse engines engage. Nuclear pulse. For when 20,000 miles per hour just ain't fast enough. Hold on to your hats. Control, we have a problem. Advanced radar is tracking incoming lunar debris and it's right on our flight path. Roger, Perseus. You are cleared for evasive action. Repeat, you are cleared for evasive action. Roger, Control. We're on the move. Successful. You better start tracking those bogeys. From my calculations, they're in the Earth's gravity and heading your way. A couple of those rocks looked larger than the Mexico meteor. Just in the last hour, this storm has really started to bear down in the city. Power is reported being lost in two thirds of the home, and officials are calling for a complete and immediate evacuation of the entire Tri County area. But with similar storms ravaging the entire coast, and the imminent boon to be striking anywhere at any time, the question remains, evacuate to where? For now, it appears there's no escape from this earth storm. Ah, hell. Everybody stay calm, stay calm. Go to generator power. That's gonna put us on a bit of a clock. We got limited time on the generators, people. We can't get the power back up, we'll lose them completely. And they need us to fly home. Will, I need a precise time estimate on our remaining power. I'm working on it. There's someone to see you. What do you got? You call downstairs, tell them to crank it up. I, I really need to see my boss, John Redding. It's very, very important. Rena, I'm Dr. Lana Gale. We are so glad that you are okay. Thanks. I, I really need to see John Redding. It's it's urgent. Will you settle for a video feed? John's on the shuttle Perseus, a few thousand miles from the moon. The moon. Huh. You can speak to John right over here. <laughs> Will, pull up a video feed on John. Uh, John, you there? Brina, is that you? Yeah. Oh, hey, can you see me? Yeah, I can. Uh, look, I know I said you needed to get away, but this is a little ridiculous. Listen, thank God you're alive. How's Oliver? Oh, he's fine, he's fine. He's banged up and in the hospital, but, uh, but he's gonna be okay. John, you're coming back, right? Oh, yeah. That is most definitely on this itinerary. Good, because I went to hell and back to get that thing you asked for. You got it. Great, be sure you get it to a woman down there named Lana Gale. You be sure you give it to her, all right? Yeah, she's right here next to me. You did great. If you can believe it, they've got me overseeing a blast job that's gonna save the moon. Now you get that sample to Lana, and I'll see you around. Stay safe down there. Yeah, bye, John. Where did you get this? 
A media creator in Baltimore. I'm in the lab. Perseus is on target. Entering the outer phase of the debris field. Control, we're taking evasive action. Buckle up, guys. This could get a bit rough. Secure the cargo hold. Continuing multiple targets forward radar. <laughs> the hell is that? Flight. We've lost communications feed and secondary hydraulics. You've been hit. How bad? All directors, report your status. Communications, get us back online. Ben, you all right? Ben! Rachel, Ben's down. What happened? I think he's unconscious. General Perseus, what's your status? Control, we're clear of the debris field for now. The shuttle sustained a hit and Ben's been hurt. How about the payload? Got knocked around a little bit. John's with Ben now. Just secure that payload. Forget about Ben. John, do you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Now, could you shut up, Victor? Look, if that payload gets damaged, nothing else is going to matter. So Ben doesn't have a serious neck injury. I'm inspecting the nukes now, and they seem to be okay. Just a detached cargo clip. <clears throat> Payload secured. Thank you. Okay, how much longer? Hold on, hold on. That's interesting. What? That's interesting. What? I'm printing. So that's interesting, right? Approaching the Remus or Salus, our first clear view of the fault should be any minute now. John, are you seeing this? Looks like we've got our work cut out for us. My father was right, Victor. The lunar core is composed mainly of dense metals. It's not a fantasy anymore, it's a fact. It's full of uranium, iron, the list goes on. And it's far from the structure of Miranda. My father's theory was just proven. Correct me if I'm wrong, but... 
does not mean we should have sent a mag instead of the nukes. John? John, are you there? It's Albert. That sample that you sent proves that the moon has more iron in its structure than we were planning for in our blast. Please tell me that you guys are kidding me right now. I wish I was, but we're working on a solution. Right, okay, you know where to find us. Rachel, we can't use the nukes. What? Why? Moon's surface is too rigid. It wouldn't sustain the shock wave. Make the whole situation worse. John, come in, this is Albert again. John? Yeah. We, uh, we're gonna try to convert the nukes that you got up there into a meg charge. We almost have it figured out. John, you still there? John, I know it sounds crazy, but we've been able to assemble a puzzle down here, using elements of the shuttle and the nukes to come up with a plan that actually works. I hear you, Lana. My only question is, I mean, obviously we can't put a meg charge where we were gonna blast. Okay, where do you suggest we go? Will, are you on? Right here, John. See if you can figure out for me where the epicenter of all this seismic activity is within the fault. Can you do that? Kind of find out where the fulcrum is. Copy that, John. I'll put a geology team on it right away. Did you get all that? Yep. Good. Because you're going to have to get us there. All right. I'm on it. Just uh, be careful in here. This is Shuttle Perseus to control. Standing by for instructions. Shuttle Perseus, you are clear to maneuver. Roger, control. We're on the move. All right, Albert, what's the first step? Talk to me. OK, John, we need a timing trigger. Okay. Uh, there's a heating circuit in your mission science equipment that you're not using right now. Where? Look for a bin labeled MF-431. Look for the orange label. Orange MF-431, got it, go ahead. OK, John, you are going to pull out the igniter module, and we can marry it to the payload circuit path. Ah! Oh, yeah. John, if you see anything green, don't touch it. Can you confirm that message for me, John? Nothing green. John, are you digging? Did you find it? It's clearly marked. Right, got it. Next. John, go to the circuit boards towards the flight deck. You'll see a row of black circuit panels. Which one? The one labeled channel interface. Behind that panel, you'll find the tubing that you need. They're cut. Next. Follow that cable to the junction box. Can I help you find something? Hey, good to have you back, buddy. What about the, how can you, how can you maximize the liquid hydrogen? Will, geology has come up with new drop point coordinates. We're going to have to go straight to the core. We've calculated a flight path down through the fissure. Got new coordinates coming in for you, Perseus. We're taking you down into the fissure. Roger, control. Coordinates received. It's going to be dark down there. bomb I ever built. We 
We've got a problem. What is it? I've done a recalculation based on our solenoids. Solenoids? What about them? The maximum power you could expect to get out of that contraption is about one hundredth of what you need. What? No. Yes, the velocity line. It's just not there. It won't give you the pull you need. He's right. It's not going to work. We underestimated the conduction we got. Approaching the new drop point. Increasing seismic activity. We've got to get out of here now, or we won't get out of here at all. We'll get trapped. Albert, Lana, talk to me, guys. John, John, listen, I'm afraid I have some bad news. The Meg won't work either. The lines of force are too small. What do you mean, too small? I thought you guys had this all figured out. We got to blow this thing. John, this is Victor. Listen, it won't work. It's over. It's not over. What is the problem? John, it's the magnitude of force we can't change. The maximum field that we can create up there with what we've got is just not going to make a difference. Lana, come on. We are up here. Let's drop this sucker. Maybe it will work. He's right. This is all we have. We need to go. No. There's got to be something we're missing, Gart. We have got to make sure the shot works. Come on, guys. Help us out up here, OK? Think. What do we have on board this ship that'll make this thing work? Yeah. They just don't have the power. We're draining crucial generator time here, people. We can't push this any longer. Wait a minute. The engines. They're sitting on two nuclear pulse engines. The pulse engines. Ben, we can get access to those, right? Is that an option, guys? Can that be made to work? Albert, Lana, talk to me. I think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's definitely possible. OK, gang, here we go. John, we have got to get out of here now. The seismic activity is increasing. Copy that, Rachel. We're almost there. What do I do next, Ben? The control panel is above the engine. The access code is 8491-138. 138. 138, got it. Now what? Now use the winch to slide the meg inside the engines. But please, please be careful. Those my engines are extremely fragile. But the two charges need to be balanced, and we don't know that they are. The line of force could still be too weak. But that's when the moon's gravity kicks in, Victor. Please, for once, just trust me. Vault index is approaching the critical. Everyone, just listen up. Listen up. I want you to shut everything down. Let's restart those generators. Where's Will? Will, right here. come on, get me voice comm back as soon as possible. You got it. All right, let's load this sucker.
Control. This is Shuttle Perseus. Do you read? Get those backup generators online now. Listen, tell the president they're about to deploy the Meg. All right, here we go. Okay. We're locked and loaded. Do this to me. Control, this is Shuttle Perseus. Do you read? Albert? Albert! John, we lost all communication. Well, get him back for me now. I can't. The problem's in Houston. What happens now? Jettison the engines. We detonate en route according to your calculations. Copy that. The Meg is set to go. I can calculate detonation timing on the fly. Copy that. Release those suckers. We gotta get the hell out of here. Got it. Shuttle Perseus, can you read me over? Shuttle Perseus, do you read? Over. disturbances and rapid growth in Rima Fault. John, you can hear me. You've got to detonate. seismic activity. Blow the damn thing. It's too late. Perseus, 
Can you read me? Over. Shuttle Perseus, this is Mission Control. Do you read over? Shuttle Perseus, can you read me? Over. Shuttle Perseus, this is Mission Control. Do you read over? Shuttle Perseus, can you read me? This is Shuttle Perseus. Finish it? Just now. Well, then this will be right on time. It's the foreword that Victor wrote. A foreword? Should I be concerned? No, it's uh, actually not too bad. He apologized for everything he said about your dad, and he even gives you a compliment in his own kind of sort of arrogant Victor way. Must have been humbling. So, uh, it's basically seven days a week, 365. So, when do you have time to go out? What do you mean, like, uh, off-campus kind of stuff? Off-campus. How are we looking? Beautiful. The movers are bringing in everything as we speak. Well, I know the offices are huge. It's gonna be awesome. Offices? Garth wants me back. And I want to be back. This is where I belong. Speaking of where people belong, are you ever planning to come back to work? You know what, Brina? I've been thinking about that whole thing. Excuse me. <laughs> and you've been right all along about this whole taking more time off thing. Yeah, uh, so I, I'm just going to start switching over the addresses and, uh, of course, internet, because you can't live without the internet. It's just like you, this one. Work, work, work. Damn over chambers. Where are you taking me? to engage in some off-campus debauchery. You know what? What? He's in trouble. Mm. So if you're not gonna go back to work right away, what are you gonna do? I think I'll heed some advice about a vacation I'm in desperate need of. They say space is the next vacation hotspot. Already been there. Do you like sailing? Is that an invitation? Yes. You accepting? Uh, yes. Caribbean? Gotta be careful. It is hurricane season. <laughs> 